Fima jemu bama jemu je. Fima jemu bama jemu je. Ma jemu okuntu. So da ye mi duro. Fima jemu bama jemu je. Fima jemu dama jemuru. Fima jemu dama jemuru. Ma jemu okuntu. So da ye mi duro, fi ma jemu ba ma jemu je. Fi ma jemu ba ma jemu je o. Fi ma jemu ba ma jemu je. Ma jemu o kun kun. So da ye mi duro, fi ma jemu da ma jemu ru. Ika sili mali shakali asakada. Lord, you are a grateful, a precious God. And we give all glory to your name because you are God that never fails. You are the I am that I am. Thank you because you paid for everything. I don't have to pay again. All my debt is settled. All the debt of my followers, my viewers are settled. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you pay for everything. You pay for all. I don't have to pay again. You don't have to pay again. Jesus died on the cross to settle your debt. Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for every generational iniquities and transgression that the enemy can use against you. Jesus paid it all. I want to welcome you to this uh, special prayer program. And I pray the Lord will visit you. I will be praying deliverance prayer. And we want to pray against every inherited judgment. We want to pray against every inherited judgment, every power. Of, and we want to cancel every demonic covenant. There are about three basic prayer points. And I want you to be in the spirit with me. We want to pray against deliverance, deliverance from inherited judgment. We need deliverance from bloodline, evils that are associated with our bloodline. And of course, we need deliverance from hidden and secret covenants that we or our forefathers entered into. But just before I proceed with this broadcast, as I was praying before I started this thing, the Holy Spirit said to me, for you to actually benefit, totally benefit from this prayer, you have to give all your life to Christ. I mean all, not part. Because there are some things we, you cannot enjoy until you totally submit everything about you to God. You know, the covenant of the blood of Jesus is the most powerful covenant on heart. And I'm going to say that again. The covenant of the blood of Jesus is the most covenant on heart today. The blood of Christ is the most powerful blood. And the covenant that that blood sealed for you is the most covenant blood. And we are going to start. Thank you, ma'am, Mrs. Regina. The Lord bless you. I just want to encourage you to also share with other people so that they can join and watch and participate in this prophetic prayer. There is no blood that can counter what the blood of Jesus has done. And put in, in another way, there is nothing, there is no written ordinance that in your family that the blood of Jesus cannot cancel. And that is where I take the first prayer point. In the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 14, he said he has blunt out every ordinance that is written against us and he has nailed it on the cross. It means there are ordinances in our family, there are ordinances in our lineage, there are written documents, pronounced judgment and, and, and covenant that was sealed with blood. You are welcome, Mrs. Awuni, if you look at Covenant that are sealed with blood, blood of animal, blood, blood of men, blood, blood of human beings. And those covenants are working against us. That is a story I love to share. 
before I pray with you. Because in this single story, this single story captured the whole thing that I want to say. I'm talking about the power in the blood of Jesus versus the power in the in your in your on your bloodline. The power in the covenant of the blood of Jesus versus the covenant, the secret covenant that is tormenting you in your bloodline. A little girl came from a city in Nigeria. He got she got to the village and she saw his grandmother, you know, trying to cut wood, firewood to make fire. And the little girl collected the hacks from the old woman. And as she was trying to cut the wool, she saw an hilly place and she put the, the wood on the hill. And she began to cut it. In the night, they used that wood to prepare food and they cook with it and they ate. But in the night, when they woke up, this little lady, a girl that came from Lagos, could not talk again. Her blood began to dry and she was sick very terribly. And they began to pray for her. They moved from one mountain to the other. She couldn't talk. She, did, she couldn't see anything. Her blood began to dry. So they finally got to the mountain of mercy in Eriwekite. I pray for anyone listening to me. You will not be a victim of inherited judgment. I said you will not be a victim of inherited judgment. This is a true life story. And when they got to the mountain, they prayed, they did everything. This lady did not get her life back. So the prophet on the mountain prayed prophetic prayer. Just like the word I'm going to pray. So they asked the Lord, give this lady opportunity to speak to us. So that we can know what is wrong. With her, you know, when God gives prophet insight into a situation, that situation is about to be solved. For instance, before I started this program, the Lord told me, He said, Some of you, you have entered into a secret covenant with demon. Your forefather, they have entered into a secret covenant with demon. And that's why you see all this demon manipulating and tormenting you in your dream. It's not your fault. But that is a, it's, it's an inherited judgment. So they pray. God showed us what is the way out. What is it that happened to this lady? And she managed and God heard them. And the lady began to talk. She said when she went to the village to help her mother cut the wood. And in her dream, after the head, he saw a demon. A powerful demon who told her the story of their lineage. Some of you, you are just praying. The secret of your battle has not been revealed to you. And until the secret of your battle is revealed to you, victory is not aside. sight. And of course, she began to narrate the story. That after the head in the village, she saw in her dream a demon who came to her and narrated the whole story. He said the demon said there was a time in this village a very long time ago, about 400 years, fourth generation. He said the community were having problem. They were having issue. Other community are coming to enslave them. And they thought, what could they do to have victory over the situation? So they went to the forest and consulted with a demon. Follow the story. Because that is where I'm picking up my prayer point. Some of our forefathers, they have also went to the forest to consult with demon. So the forefather of this lady went to the forest and consulted with a demon who promised to fight the battle for them. But in response, that every year the community will be sacrificing the, a human blood to the demon. So they agree that is the basis of covenant. Some of our forefathers, they have had agreement with demon far, far before we were born. And that covenant they had is transgenerational. You may not know anything about that covenant, but if you don't pray against it, it will still be affecting your life. And of course, the demon came to town. And that's why most of this masquerade you see in Africa, they are from the forest. They used the image of the demon they saw 
the image of the demon they negotiated with that is the image of the demon they used to make all those uh, all those uh, what do they call it all those masquerade when you see masculine, you know, they are they are representing faces of demons of evil that have maybe helped your lineage or the family at one time or the other. So the demon agreed, he came to their town and he fought the battle for them, and of course, they won. So when the king was there, every year they sacrificed human blood to that deity, to that demon. But after the demise of that king, another king came and said. I cannot afford to be sacrificing human blood to an idol every year. So he said, I'm going to change it to a cow. And of course, he changed it to a cow. And the demon was angry, but there was no way he could respond. So the king continued, instead of human blood, he began to offer the blood of cow to the demon. And that king passed away. The Lord is telling me that some of you listening to me, your father has, offer, has also offered blood of animal on your behalf to idol. And that is why this idol is still tormenting you up to this now. But I will be praying for you just after this story. This broker is not going to be long because I have specific prayer for specific people after this story. And the, another king came. He said, I cannot afford a cow. That will change this to a goat. So every year during the anniversary of that idol, he offered a goat. Another king came. He said, I don't have to offer human blood. I cannot offer cow or goat. I'm not going to offer anything. And some of us, we thought demons or spirits die. No, they don't die. They can be silent in the corner, but they don't die. So the whole community neglected the covenant they had with this demon. And it was in the place where this little girl that came from the city was cutting wood that that idol was buried. So they forgot about it. They don't worship. They don't sacrifice that covenant. They don't uh, service that covenant again. Kill him as Yadeliasha. Everyone that is still servicing a covenant on your behalf and that is making the demon and the idols in your family to be appearing to you, to torment you, I cancel that by the blood of Jesus. So, it's, the demon was very annoyed because no sacrifice was made unto him again. No blood sacrifice was made unto him again. And the day this little girl came from city, to cut the wood on the head of this demon. He said the demon touched her heart and hold her heart very tight and said, your forefather promised to be sacrificing human blood to me, but they failed and they don't do it. He said, nobody can pray for you and you will escape. He said, you will be the sacrifice, the final sacrifice that I will take. He said, I'm going to leave your town, but no one will pray for you and you will escape. And you see the mystery of that powerful covenant? They pray, but the lady still die. That is the nature of inherited judgment. Some of us, we found ourselves. Some of our forefathers, they have entered covenant with demon. That's why when you sleep, you see somebody trying to have sex with you in the, in the dream. Do you know what that is saying to you? That demon is telling you, that your forefather had a, a blood covenant with him. And I'm here to take it from you. When a man and a woman have sex, what is released is blood. It's, 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 it's blood. It's blood exchange. He's saying you are part of this covenant and I have power over you to take virtue from you. So he will not just collect your blood. He's collecting your blessing. That is what that demon is. He's saying that I am justified to have sex with you to take from your blood because your forefather had a part with me, had a covenant with me. And that is why when you give your life to Jesus Christ, what you are doing is you are saying, Jesus, I'm submitting whatever causes in my bloodline. I'm accepting your blood as the most superior blood. And that's why this prayer will not work for you. 
if you are not born again or you do not give your life to Christ. Because it is blood against blood. He said that he said the blood of Jesus speak better than the blood of Abel. And that is where I pick the first prayer point. He said the blood of Jesus speak better thing than the blood of Abel. It means blood as a voice and blood does speak. The life of everything is in the blood. When Cain killed Abel and buried the evidence and God appeared to the guy said, you thought what you have done and we not know. He said the blood of your brother is crying for vengeance. Is crying for revenge. Some of you listening to me. The blood in your lineage is crying for vengeance. And that's why they are having says, giving you food. One way you will know that you are dealing with secret covenant. With evil covenant is you are always powerless in the dream. They will offer you food, you will take, you cannot reject because you cannot reject because it's part of the covenant. They will have sex with you, you cannot reject. Yes, you cannot reject because that covenant, you, your forefather has a part with that demon that is having a, a, a sex with you. But I'm praying for you this very day for anyone that is under the voice of my that is under this prophetic prayer. Every pass that your forefather up to the tenth generation has entered to that has have given the demon, the, the idol, a license to torment you. The blood of Jesus cancel the bloodline of your family in the name of Jesus. All I need for you to connect with me is a man. Everything your forefather has done that is now a payback time on you, that they are now using you as a sacrifice for payback. Iria da Silia da Kaliada, every part of you that the demon is using to service a, an old covenant, that part of your body is receiving the fire of Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Le Kadesia Male Kadesiala. Literally, that I'm seeing a demon now. The demon is saying, But if I give you food on my in your dream, that I'm justified. And do you know what that demon is saying? He said, Your forefather hates with me. He said it is, he said it is also compulsory for you to eat with me. That's what I'm seeing right now. I'm seeing a demon. He's saying, I am justified to feed you, to give you food in your dream. And I'm saying, why? He said, because your forefather sat with me and we had together. That is the license that devil is using. That is the license that demon is using. He said, your forefather took this part. He said, you must take. And when you see yourself eating, eating the dream, that what he's telling you is, the way your forefather handed, that is the way you will end. The kind of causes and evil and 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 and, and, and evil that they experience. He said that is what you will also experience. But every for everyone that can say, man, every evil covenant your forefather has entered to that is still manifesting in your life. Male Karisi Ashama the Adam, the blood of Jesus remove you from that evil covenant not in the name of Jesus. There is nothing as powerful as blood. There is not. The Lord told me just before we began. He said, some of you, you have, you have service, you have offered sacrifice to the idol by sleeping, by having sex in your dream. He said, you have slept with demon. Not every lady you see on the street are human beings. Not every girl you see on the street are human beings. Some of them are demon. All they wanted to achieve is to have sex, have a kind of knowledge of you, and they service that covenant. I was praying on this same mountain about two years ago. A woman came. She was a wife of a commissioner, one of the wife of this present serving commissioner. And she came. And as I was praying, the Holy Ghost told me, he said, ask her. I said, somebody is using sex to service a covenant with your husband on Thursday. He said, I noticed that on every Thursday, my husband usually come home late. I said, someone is using sex to service a covenant. I also pray for you. When you have sex in your dream, what you are doing is you are servicing 
the covenant your forefather had with demon. It's a very dangerous thing. You are servicing it. You are saying, okay, let me offer this. You are the blessing that you ought to have. You are offering it on the altar of that idol. He's taking it by force. That's why you are always powerless. You can't resist it because that idol is justified. He's saying your forefather had the part with me. And because you are, you are from their lineage, you also have a part. But when Jesus came, Jesus said, every ordinance that is written against you, that the enemy depends on to torment you, he tore it and nailed it on the cross. So as a born again Christian, yes, you are exempted. You are not supposed to be part of that evil as a born again Christ believing Christian. He said, You are accepted. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. He said, All the ordinances, all the ordinances that is written against you, that the enemy depends on to judge you. He said, He has taught it and nailed it on the cross. For anyone that can say, Amen, what's the judgment paper? that the high doors of your father's house depend on to torment you the blood of jesus is washing that away it's being nailed on the cross and you must accept that you are not part of them you are no longer part of that cost lineage yes you are no longer part of that cost lineage whatever parts that my forefather had with an with idol that is tormenting my brother and sister i carry a covenant of exemption i carry different blood i carry different blood the blood of jesus is what is flowing in your body that's why from today on i speak to your life every channel thank you holy spirit every channel that demon has opened that they always use to attack you some is sex some is food some is just spider web it's a channel they are channel some they are they are, they are evil friends whenever they want to succeed in the kingdom of hell they just send one evil possessed person to them to befriend them and pray for you. That is what I'm hearing in my spirit. Every channel that the enemy has opened into your life that they are using to torment your destiny, I close that channel in the name of Jesus. Every door, some is sin. Once you commit a certain sin, you open up your life to, uh, to, to torment, to demon. When you commit certain sin, you open up your life, particularly the sin of fornication and loss. When you open, when you submit your body to all those sins, the Holy Ghost cannot help you. It cannot help you because you submitted yourself. And he said, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and that whosoever destroy this temple, I will destroy him. God, is saying, God himself is saying, I'm going to destroy you if you destroy your body. I pray for you, every channel, every channel that the enemy is using to service a secret covenant that you are not aware of. You, how can I be part of covenant that was made 500 years ago? Yeah, the devil knew how to make it happen. He will just, sometimes you sleep, you find yourself in, the, in your whole house. Sometimes you sleep, in, you find yourself in your village. What they are saying to you is that you are going home to service that covenant. You are, that, that, some, some, sometimes you see the demon, the idol, the masquerade appear to you in your dream you'll be holding money and collect money from you sometimes you'll be you you'll be holding certificate it collects certificate from you every channel that devil is using to torment you as a result of inherited judgment as a result of bloodline as a result of secret covenant that your parents enter to unknowingly that channel is closed by the blood 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 and when jesus go to the cross i want to round up with this word in John chapter 19, verse 30, when they laid Jesus Christ on the cross, they pierced his body, his blood flew to the ground, and when it was time for Jesus to give up the ghost, John chapter 19, verse 30, he said a word, and he said, it is finished. And I was meditating on this word. He said, it is finished. And the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. He said, what Christ said, it is finished, must not remain in my life. 
That's simple, but to me that's powerful. He said, Christ said, it is finished. Then the trace, the signal of anything that Christ has nailed to the cross must not be found in my life. So if Christ said, the causes in your father's house, it is finished. That cause must not find expression in my life. I want you to type that. Jesus said, it is finished. Then the cause, he said, every ordinance that was written against me, Christ said, it is finished. He nailed it on the cross. And these are the ordinances, generational ordinances, that is producing generational pattern. The same thing happened to your brother. It's also happened to you, happening to you. It's a result of an inherited judgment. An ordinance in the spirit realm that is now giving you similarity and the evil similarity. Can I pray for you? Christ said it is finished. The causes in my lineage it is finished so the traces of anything christ said it is finished must not be found in your life it will not be found in your life it will not be found in your life some people the ordinance in their lineage is marital failure that will not be found in your life that will not be found in the life of your children some people the ordinance in their lineage is wasted effort wasted effort they spend years serving men they spend years serving husband. When it is a time for them to enjoy that husband, that husband might either divorce them or go and marry another person or just die. It's an ordinance. The ordinance is always standing at the gate of reward. Can I pray for you? Every ordinance that is always standing at the gate of your reward allow you to labor but stop you from harvesting every demonic ordinance that is always standing at the gate of your harvest at the gate of your sources the blood of jesus remove them we nail it to the cross today and thank god today is the day christ nailed everything today and that's why this prayer is very significant he said it is finished that is it is, the trace of that thing must not be found in your life some people is shy, is, 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 is low, is, is, is late shy bed. They will marry for 10, 15 years. No issue. It's a pattern as a result of ordinance. But today Christ said it is done. It is finished. Do you know the meaning of it is finished? It is done. Completely free. He said you are free from the evil. Today, whatever make you resemble them in your family, that trace, it is finished. It is removed. It is finished. It is removed. Some people is protracted sickness. They will say is there is our is our our family problem. Do you have a family problem? It means you are, you don't know your inheritance in Christ. You are not one of them. Your new status in Christ, when you become born again, is that you are now lined up with Abraham. No. I don't trace my lineage to biological line. No, unless the blessing the family. But once it is evil, Christ said it is finished. That late marriage, it is finished. That sickness as a result of ordinance in your family, it is finished. It is finished means 100 percent gone. So it's no trace of family causes you will find in your life. They say it's our family sickness. It's our family pro pro problem. It's our family pattern. I'm not part of that pattern because I belong to Christ. You belong to Christ. And as I round up, I pray for you. Christ said it is finished. It is finished. He said he was so rich, but because of me, he, be he became poor so that I can be real. Every form of poverty that is a product of ordinance in my family and your family we escape today. Do you know what Christ did on the cross? Christ said, whatever you want to do unto me, do this is the way Christ put it. He said, whatever punishment that is due to Adura Lere Uluwagbomi, he said, I'm hanging. It's a sign of surrender. This is how Christ did. He surrendered. He said, I'm ready to take all. Put all the punishment on me. And that's why he did not talk. When they are, when they are giving him that cane lashes and bitter wine, he did not say a word. He said, Put everything on me. Put everything on me because I don't want to see all this evil in the life of my children. And you are one of them. So, inherited judgment, 
evil ordinances, secret covenants, they laid everything on Christ. And the Bible says God was satisfied to see it so. So Jesus born all. Jesus carried all. Jesus paid for all. So you are not going to pay for any. You are no longer entitled to pay for any. It's going to be a double payment. If you, if Christ paid with his stripes, and you are also paying with your main money to buy medicals. It's an insult for a born again Christian to be buying medicals, medicines. Christ said, I paid for her. He said, by his stripes, I am healed. Your faith can do it, take it. But if your faith cannot handle it, go spend your money on medicine. But if your faith can undo it, Christ said, I paid. Adura, you don't need to pay. Yesterday, I was just feeling in my spirit that I should pray. When it is five minutes to twelve, my spirit was praying. So I began to pray in tongue. About ten minutes to one, I my spirit began to pray. I began to pray. About ten minutes to three, I my spirit was praying and I began to pray. And after the third session of that prayer, and Haru came to my chest, and I couldn't breathe very well. Do you know what I said? I said, devil, you lie. Christ has paid for all the pains that I'm supposed to carry. The Bible says he carried all. Christ cannot be carried the pain. And I'm also carrying the pain at the, at the same time. I said it's an insult to what Christ did. So I said, you this arrow, right now, very, at this very moment, I need you to get out. And immediately the thing left. Do you know why he left? Because Christ said, I've paid. For every arrow that the enemy is targeting, he said, I surrender myself. It should be coming to my body. Christ said, I gave out my body. Send all the arrow to me. None must go to my son. Are you a son? Christ is saying he surrender his body. None must go to you. Say none must come to you. I pray none of this arrow. That's why I say affliction shall not come near your dwelling. Why? Because he surrender. He surrender. He surrender. So the whole. He bore your sorrow. He paid for your sorrow. He paid for all the arrows. He paid for your iniquities. He paid for your sin. He paid for all the evil ordinances. The, his blood cover all the blood sacrifices that you have done in your family. It doesn't matter. I'm hearing in my spirit. He said it doesn't matter the number of altar in your father's house. That cross of Jesus is the most superior altar in the world. I, want, I need you to type, type that. I see some people are online with me. And those of you that are going to watch on YouTube, the most important altar is the cross of Jesus. Because every altar must have a dead sacrifice for that altar to be able to attack. I'm going to say that again. Every altar must have a dead sacrifice for that altar to empower to attack. That's why in traditional Yoruba or African setting, they kill cow, they kill all this. They put the blood on the altar. When they slaughter an animal on the altar and the blood touch that altar, that altar is empowered to fight. Whosoever person's name they mention. And that is the same Jesus thing Jesus Christ did. He said, I surrender myself as a sacrifice on this altar. And that altar of Christ is the cross. And he said, and that is why he needed to die on the cross so that his blood can become can empower the cross and that's why you see people putting on cross today they are saying i carry an altar that is more powerful than the altar in my father's house do you know you have an altar do you know you you have an altar that you can consult when the altar of your father's house is is disturbing you and that altar is the cross and that altar is the blood. And that altar is the name of Jesus. My spirit is fire up right now. Everyone receiving arrow from your father's altar, I, I, I declare the cross of Jesus will send those arrow back to the altar. Every arrow of sorrow, every arrow of stagnation, every arrow of sickness, every arrow of delay, every arrow of madness, every arrow that is responsible for negativity in your life i ask the blood of jesus to return to swallow to swallow to swallow those arrows on your behalf from today when they mention your name the cross will appear from today when they mention the name of your children the, the cross will appear from today when you know in the wilderness 
they were in the wilderness and snake began to bite them. And God told Moses, make a silver snake, raise it up. Whosoever that can look at that will be saved, will be delivered. He was talking about the work of Jesus in fusion. Jesus was hung, publicly shamed, so that you will not be publicly shamed again. Jesus became a man of sorrow. The Bible says he was green. He became a, 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 a grieving man, so that you can be an happy man. It, that is, it is a useless thing. About two days ago, I did a program online. Just before I started the program, I began to pray. And I saw Jesus on the cross. And I saw many people also on the cross. I said, what is the meaning of this vision? I also saw Jesus carrying the cross with pain, with pain. I also saw many believers carry, also carry their cross. And Jesus said, it's not supposed to be so. Jesus said, it is not supposed to be so. He said, I was on the cross so that you will not be on the cross. He said, I carry the body so that you will not carry the body again. Do you know every pain you are experiencing today? Jesus is not happy about it. Jesus is saying, it is not supposed to be so. That sickness in your body, Jesus is saying, it is not supposed to be so. That evil dream that you are having, Jesus is saying, it is not supposed to be so. Why are I paid for it all. May that be your testimony. You will not pay for what Christ has paid for. If you do, you lose. You will not do so. You will not pay for it. Your body will become the temple of fire. Your body will become the temple of fire. No arrow will be able to stay for one hour in your body. I want everyone listening to me to type that. Jesus said, our affliction is for a moment. Uh, the definition of, my, of a moment is one hour. Every arrow that lasts more than a day in your body is a cause. It's not supposed to be. And I pray for you. Everyone you have been nurturing in your body. Every evil dream you have been managing. Today you are disconnected from them. You are in power in your spirit, in the spirit realm to say no. When they bring evil offer for you in your dream, you are in power to say no in Jesus' name. May your spirit man receive the fire of holy ghost may you have that kind of heart that hates the devil so passionately i need you to be to be hungry with the devil jesus paid and anytime the devil is afflicting you you are paying the devil again and jesus said but everything i've done over you is now a waste it's not supposed to be so as you celebrate this easter may you have understanding of the blood of jesus may you receive the victory he said by the word of their testimony and by the blood of the Lamb, they overcame the devil. May you overcome all that is tormenting your life. May you overcome Karima Sikada. It, the Lord is saying to me, He said, one of the things that the blood of Jesus does is to shift people's status. It will turn you from being a failure to success. Because one of the things that Hotter does is to bring transformation whether negative or positive but the blood of jesus has come to shift you to change you to transform you so for everyone that needs transformation from one level to the other receive it by the blood the sacrifice of jesus will work for you it will be seen in your life the miracle of the cross will be seen in your life the miracle of the blood will be seen in your life the miracle of the sacrifices of jesus on the cross will be seen in your life and from today when men see you, they will see God in your life. When Moses came back from the mountain, the Bible said nobody can look at his face. Even when he died, when Moses died, the devil came and wanted to touch his body. An angel appeared and said, a man you cannot touch when he was alive. What gives you assurance that you are going to touch the body? And an angel said, no, you can't touch. So Moses carried a dimension of the touch not when he was asleep, when he was alive, and when he finally died. He said, this body is untouchable. May you have that kind of testimony. Your body today is untouchable. For demons, it's untouchable. For evil covenant, it's untouchable. Your body, your kidney, your eyes, your liver, everything that has to do with you and your children. You will not be a victim of any attack. The Lord bless you. My spirit is fire. If I say I want to continue, I will just continue like that. But let's just stop. Um, but the most important thing is you give all your life to Christ so that you can enjoy all that Christ did for you. Don't allow sin. Sin always open your life to demonic attack. 
you will now be as if you don't have Christ. Anytime you sin, you render the power of the cross useless over your situation. You are you are holding Christ, say, you cannot help me. That is what sin does to a man. He doesn't allow Christ to help you. But when you leave, you remember the story of, of Balak and Balaam. Balak invited prophet Balaam. He said, come and cause Israel for me. And they stood on the mountain like this. And they were looking at Israel from afar. Speaking from Numbers chapter 21 to 23. And he said, curse these people for me. Speaking about altar. One more prayer. And they arranged seven different altar on the first day. And they killed a bullock on each altar. A cow and a bullock on each altar. Seven altar. And they were looking at Israel at afar. Arranged seven different altar. I said, curse these people for me. Do you know when you are asleep, when you go to your work, some people have invited occultic men to curse you. I said, curse these people for me. And Balaam went and consulted God. And God appeared to Balaam. He said, these people, you cannot curse them. And Balaam came with a bad news to Balak. Everyone expecting your downfall will always receive a bad news. He said, this is what God said, though. I cannot curse these people because God has blessed them. And Balak was not satisfied with that answer. Second day, he arranged another mountain where they can see the Israelites afar. And they arranged other seven altar, making 14 over one nation. Seven. And kill one bullock and one cow on each of the altar. He said, curse these people for me. I'm going to pay you. Anyone that have received remuneration to destroy your life, may that same amount they receive destroy their destiny. And he went and consulted the Lord again. And God said, you cannot curse these people uh, because I've blessed them. And the third time, this is what he said that amazes me. They arranged another hotter on a different mountain. One nation, three different mountains, 21 different altar, Just to destroy life of a nation. And he said, I perceive in my mind that God does not want to curse these people. And, he, and God told uh, Balaam, he said, I have not found iniquity in Israel. Why will you curse them when I have not found iniquity in their hand? So if anybody threatens to curse you, just make sure you live a holy life. Once there is no iniquity in your hand, every evil spoken word become an ordinary word. And this is the last prayer. I don't know what you have done because the blood today has power to cancel all transgression. Everything you have said, everything you have done, and you are justified for being punished. But I enter the covenant of the blood of Jesus. By the mercy of God, you are removed from that judgment. You are removed from that. Whether you are, you are qualified for that evil judgment or not, I don't care. I care about the blood. I'm saying the blood washes you and makes you whole again. And this is the last prayer. They arranged 21 altar just to destroy Israel. And God said no to every of those altar. Hear this prophetic word. Every altar of men, every altar of demon, every altar of abalist, every altar of occultic men that is arranged for your downfall, that altar we receive the fire of God and God will deny the answer. It will not work against you. No utter race against you will work against you. No demonic utter race against you will work against you. The benefit of this is that we give our life to Christ. Thank everybody for watching. The Lord bless you. Can see a lot of my friend and mommy. Amina Nagode. Can see my friend that you like. Can see you. Daddy, my shaman, I can see my friend from U.S. I can see every other person. The Lord bless you. Remain faithful and pray during this time. Ask the blood to fight your battle and the Lord will answer you. The Lord bless you. Mary, is it happy? Start to say, the Lord bless you. See you some other time.